Part three. <laughs> uh, all right, we pretty much took a look at how Huffington Post this little bit. On our on the supermajority, calling it the AIDS of Ben Nelson of Nebraska. Now I'll read something from the New York Times on it. This story I found. This story was put up on um, Head On Radio's Network's blog. Blog. <laughs> uh, Head On Radio Network. Radio Network is a, a liberal radio network, kind of like Air, Air America, only a bit more liberal. And not as well known. And they put this story. I'll actually put the. Um, the New York Times link itself, not the Head On Radio link, but I will, I might put, yeah, I'll put the link to Head On Radio Network itself, so if you guys want to listen, stream it online, and check out what they're like. Uh, let's see. Carl Hughes of New York Times, July 1st, 2009. Senate Democrats are about to reach the magical threshold of 60 votes, allowing them, in theory, to sweep aside Republican delay tactics. <laughs> yeah, right. But the arrival of that 60 vote in the in person of Al Franken is n not likely to make the party's very, very real difficulties in advancing to continuous legislation disappear. Persistent absences of two-year, a uh, two veteran Democratic senators because of serious illness, and in the and they have a picture here of both Senator Byrd and Senator K Kennedy. My uh, my, one of my senators, since I live in Massachusetts, uh, here, showing that they don't always vote all the time. Absence because of health, health reasons. Although, Bird was brought in for the, um, to vote on the uh, mortgage bill that I mentioned in the last video. And he voted against, voted with the Republicans. Losing We have 60 votes on paper, Senator Harry Reid says. Oh, so basically, also, also that means that Harry Reid, our majority leader, is not going to be, is not going to try to keep them together. Thanks a lot, Harry. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of great leader you are. Uh, said in the view that, but we cannot bulldoze anybody. It doesn't work that way. My caucus doesn't allow it. And we have a diverse group of senators philosophically. I'm not, I am not this morning suddenly flexing my muscles. Yeah, thanks a lot. How, how can we call you leaders then? Indeed, becoming the first party in 30 years to reach Fable Plateau of 60 could create a, as many political problems as saws, raising expectations sky high, potentially causing a backlash should Democrats falter on energy or health care, or the Employee Free Choice Act. The, the, and here is Bernie Sanders quote, one of my favorite senators. Uh, the American people are going to say, look, we have given you the authority to make changes on health care, go ahead and do it. And no more excuses. And I say, if you don't, we're going to we, 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 we we find a true progressive to challenge you in the Democratic primary or challenge you as a third party. <laughs> Which, I know, I know, third party votes are not all that great because how often does a third party person uh, win? I mean, because uh, we, we don't have instant raw voting, but a primary do vote doesn't always win either. I mean, Lieberman, what, I mean, Ned Lamont was the one that got closest to becoming a United States Senator through primaries and lost in the general election. I'm not sure whether or not that loss was, whether that loss was legitimate or not because I, one of my, I have a, I know somebody that voted in Connecticut and he tells me he voted on a machine and I don't trust voting machines at all. 
but so my understanding is that Connecticut has what's it, punts cards and voting machines, so it's possible the voting machines could have been rigged for leaving them. That's always possible. Uh we know voting machines have been rigged before. So <laughs> Yeah. Such talk, no doubt, on nerves. All right, you, I'll let you read this uh, vote yourself. The rest of this yourself, you can uh, find. Because I don't want to go over ten minutes. What am I doing? Oh, we got. Oh, I'm only five forty. Okay, uh, we can keep on going. Officials. And there's uh, still there's no denying that Mark that Mr. Franken double overtime victory in Minnesota gives Democrats another reliable vote. They would rather have the, the, that than the alternative. So Senate officials say Mr. Franken had accepted the concession uh, after a favorable court ruling. We're to be sworn on Tuesday's Senate. Well, he, he's now senator. He's heard this morning. Whether a full complement of Democrats will be ha will be a hand to welcome him, welcome him in is doubtful. No, well, they have welcomed him in. What are you talking about? Okay, Senator Kennedy has been treated is being treated for brain cancer. Senator Byrd, the 91. Okay, so he's 91. 91. Obviously, you should have retired back in 2006. Uh, Senator Bird, you, you should have retired and let someone else run. Perhaps somebody younger. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, there's always that possibility he might die before the end of his before the end of his next term, which is in 2012. Uh, AIDS could not predict 2012, 2013. Predict whether Byrd would be voting regularly when the Senate returns from its 4th to July break. Even if Byrd were voting, it may not be with the Democrats on big issues. Yeah, he didn't vote with the Democrats on the uh, foreclosure bill. <laughs> foreclosure amendment. Now did he? Well, Mr. Kennedy could be counted on, on the help to push Democratic initiatives in, on health care. And climate change, Mr. Bird, Mr. Bird might be a, a tough sell on global warming, given the strong resistance in his coal-producing state. Yeah, coal. Uh, while we're on that subject, I really don't like coal companies right now because they're blowing up the mountains, the Appalachian Mountains in West Virginia, Virginia, Pennsylvania, Kentucky. From what I hear, and uh, I have a couple videos on that that uh, we'll be putting up of a uh, speech from an activist named uh, Dave Cooper that talked in Massachusetts a while back. I was horrified when I saw those photos. So, a issues. Okay, we're reaching almost nine minutes here. Uh, and basically, what, what else the story names is uh, that, uh, some senators that are so-called mavericks. Uh, what are we? I I like to call bond paid for Democrats: Evan Baugh, Mary Lane Drew, uh, and and Mr. And uh, it also says this: uh, Mr. Sanders. It's hard for Democrats to agree to join together to overcome Republicans. He wants Sanders wants to keep the party together. He wants the Democrats to stay together and vote. Although he's not the leader. Harry Reid's the leader and Reid, and Reid says he won't try to keep them together. So that's basically it. Uh, there is a little bit more you can read it yourself. I'm getting close to 9.30 now, so let's stop this. And, uh, all right, so I'll put the links uh, to the story in the sidebar.